Hello, my name is Elizabeth. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to import Excel data file into IBM SPSS. The Excel file which we are going to use is called ADL. Now, this data file explores the benefits of a proposed type of therapy for stroke patients and it consists of a hundred female stroke patients. Um, if we go through the scroll box here, it will visit the hundred records. As you can see, a hundred and one, that means the first record bears the names of the columns or the variables. Now, this is a, a typical Excel file. It's got all the labels. So, for instance, if we look at column B, group, we have treatment, we have control. Now, we cannot take such a file with labels into SPSS. So, the first thing we do is to do find and replace and code all the label variables which means the columns uh, we have b c and then f g and on and on every column that doesn't have a numeric variable we need to code it so by coding i mean we can choose to say zero equals the control and one equals treatment so normally to do that you just click on the column and in excel you go for find and replace so you can go for replace and in that column you can then put the cursor here and type in i'm struggling to get it in but that's how you do it you use a replace to replace all the treatment into something and all the control also into something so that's how you would do it so take a look at what I have done earlier. I have replaced all the control as zero and all the one as treatment. Ethnicity um, and the rest of them, they are all now XPSS ready to import. Now, one of the key things that you mustn't forget is when you do the find and replace, you must record it somewhere. So when you get into SPSS, you can then correctly put back the coding on or the label of the coding on. So I have prepared the coding which I have done in this sheet called the file information by clicking on the file information i can show you this is what i have got for the group variable i replace all the control as zero and all the treatment as one in that order so this is what i need to print out when i arrive and then stamp it on now that our file is ready to be imported into SPSS, I need to save it and then close the sheet because if the data is still open, you will not be able to bring it into SPSS. So I will click on the save because I have made some amendments to this file. And once the save is done, I can then go into file now you switch back onto SPSS and we are now going to import an Excel file into SPSS. So we go in for the file menu and then we go for open and we want to open data. So here we're looking for Excel files and you cannot find one because SPSS position itself to look for SPSS files with extension SAV. So for us to tell SPSS to look for an Excel file, we need to pull down the drop down arrow here. We need to click it and then select Excel and straight away we can then see all the Excel files in the directory.
So the file that we need is the ADL2. And then we click on. Now we've got the file open but we need to accept one or two things before we get it into SPSS. The first thing is notice that read variable names from the first row is important. It's important we keep the tick box on so the variable names in Excel will become the names in SPSS for the variable. So you always keep this tick on. The second point is that because on our Excel file, we had a number of sheets in that workbook. So we don't want this Excel file or if that's, this is not the one that we want, we would then click on the pull down arrow to display all the sheets in this workbook. Now the sheet that we want is the one which I have named SPSS ready. So we will pick up ADL SPSS and then click on OK. Now straight away the files have arrived. The first thing we need to do is to check that they all came in as numeric data. So this is very important because SPSS cannot work with strings. Because it's a numeric program, it cannot multiply strings and therefore we need to make sure that all the data came clean as numeric type data. So I will pull the scroll bar down to make sure that everything is numeric and that is successful um, um, execution of you know importing the data. Now the next column that we need to look at is the labels. Now because Excel doesn't give us two you know, kind of sheet as it were. So we need to now type in our own label. So I will start with the first variable label. You put the cursor in the label box and you double click gently and then you can type in uh, any label that you want that will reflect patient ID, for instance, that will reflect the data that you are with or the rest of them. Now, the next um, um, column that we need to work with is the values column here. Now, all the questions that I had tick boxes for the respondent to choose from, we need to declare the choices. So, we will look at the group question, which is the treatment group. Now, in the treatment group, you recall that we had zero as the code. So zero was for the control group. And then you click on add and one is how we replaced it with treatment. So zero for control, one for treatment. And then you click on OK. The next one is the ethnicity. Likewise, you click on the none, which is a default, and then you click on the three full stop, and that then bring you the value labels dialog box. So here we have one, and the one was labeled as white, and two was labeled as none, and then OK. The next one is patient age. Patient age, if we switch back to the data view, we notice that they were not categorical variables. They were continuum variable, which means there were no tick boxes. People gave the right age as it applies. So therefore, we cannot declare a tick boxes as a categorical. So we will leave the labels clean or we leave them as none and then we move on to the rest. Now the diabetes, the hypertension, all these variables label is similar to what we have started with. So we will carry on and complete those labels. Now the, the, the next important column is the measurement. How is the data measured? So we look at the data 
so looking at the patient ID patient ID was not a question for them to give us information is how the researcher numbered the individual information that they received or the responses so here we will just leave it as scale which is 1 to 100 the treatment group we had two choices and such data is termed as categorical such data types is referred to as categorical so we know it now however when we click on this pull down menu what we get is continuous data also need to look at is it a nominal categorical or is it ordinal categorical now differentiation is very simple if there are no special ranking between the choices in treatment group we have no special ranking it's either you're in a control group or you're in a treatment group so therefore where there is no order it is nominal and the name actually gives it away nominal is when there is no order now ethnicity likewise it doesn't have any order so they are all nominal to say as we have gone through they are continuum variable so we will give it a continuous skill as the measure if we look at the following group which is diabetic and on they are all nominal so one of the easiest things that we can do is to actually copy a nominal and then highlight everything that required nominal and then paste it now that saves you a lot of time so now that we have brought the data in and we have given it labels we've checked first of all to make sure that the data were brought in correctly and we've given it labels and we've also little um, made a decision on the measurement of the data we can now switch back into the data view and you can see that the data that we have in SPSS is exactly the same data that we started off with in Exeter so thus we have successfully um, imported Excel file into SPSS.